Hey everybody, happy Wednesday evening, a live tutorial stream. How are y'all doing out there on the internet today? Oh, goodness gracious. Wow. Wow. Hand surgery, that's, I'm, that's scary. Like, considering that, like, my hands are my entire livelihood now, I mean, it's just, hand surgery now is just as scary to me as, like, knee or foot surgery would have been to me when I was a dancer, but um, definitely best of luck and um, lots of positive vibes to Ace, who's having hand surgery on the 31st of August. So hi, everybody. I <laughs> um, hope everyone had a great Wednesday. I hope you had a great weekend. Um, of course, we were dark uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, so I hope everyone had great days when we were not around, and welcome back to the Beating Dream stream for this tutorial vintage style knotting. So this this literally is inspired by a, a vintage purse that I currently have in my queue to repair. I'm not looking forward to this because it's one of those things where the, the, the piece is so old that it's that the base of it is literally shredding. So I'm not looking forward to doing the repair, but it had a really cool technique used to make fringe on it, and that's what this um, particular class tonight is based upon. So let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. You are going to need some cord, and for my cord tonight, I have three cards of size 2 Griffin Silk. Um, they are not actually on the cards anymore. They're around my neck um, because that's... Um, I already unraveled them from the cards of silk, but three cards of number two Griffin silk. I've got three full strands. These are three 16 inch strands of um, four millimeter faceted rondel crystals. So anything that's small, three or four millimeter rounds or rondels is going to work well. And then I have my findings. So I've got a pair of bead tips. That's these two. So two bead tips. Um, and then a clasp of some sort, and I just have a lobster claw and a basic soldered ring. I'm also going to need some hypo cement glue, which I will grab when it is time for me to use it. As far as tools go, I'm going to need a tweezers, knotting tweezers. So that's just a really um, pointy ended tweezers. And then just for the clasp attachment, I am gonna need my chain nose pliers and I'm not even actually going to need my wire cutters, chain nose pliers, and then I am going to need a sharp scissors or a snips as well. So I'm going to start by taking all three of my silks off the cards, which I've already done, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pre-stretch each one. So when you take your silk off of the card, it's going to be all kind of bendy like this, and um, there's nothing, well hi Corvus, there's nothing inherently wrong with the bends, but um, the thing about silk is it has a little bit of natural elasticity to it, so if we don't, if we make a giant mess of everything, this is going to go a lot less smoothly. Um, <clears throat> anyway, if we don't pre-stretch our silk and get the elasticity out of it before we use it, what's going to happen? is that the weight of our beads is going to stretch our silk for us after we've completed our project and what that's going to result in is gaps in between your knots and your beads which is not what you want so stretching and especially when you've got size two silk like this um apparently this strand of beads wanted to come along for the ride um so stretching the size 2 silk especially is very easy. You're just going to wrap it around your fingers and just give it a gentle pull. Okay, size 2, it's really easy to break. So you don't want to pull too hard. But what you want is you want when you release tension on your silk for it to be straight and not have any of those bends from being wrapped around the card. And I'm just going to stretch the entire length of my silk. I'm not going to use the whole length of my silk, but I'm going to use a fair amount of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and stretch the whole thing. All the way up to the needle. Don't pull on the needle because you actually can literally rip your cord by pulling on your needle. And 
go ahead and um, I got a knot. I'm gonna knot. There we go. Alright. Okay, so I've got one silk pre stretched, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do my other two. And you can, if you want to be more efficient, typically with size two, um, you can actually do two at once. Oh, what book did Our Lady of the Toads make you buy, Heather? A little while here, later. Okay, cool. Okay, so now I've got everything pre-stretched, so I'm going to take all of my three needles and I'm going to put them together, which means I need to have them all on the same side. Okay, so I'm going to take my three needles and I'm just going to put them together. Like so. Okay, so those are my three needles. And then I'm going to just go all the way down to the end of my silks. Like so. And I'm just going to tie all of my silks together in an overhand knot. And a single overhand knot should be sufficiently big with um, three number two silks. So I'm going to go back to my needles. Once again, I've got all three of my needles. They're all here together. And I'm going to grab one of my bead tips. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to face the hook on my bead tip down. And I'm going to string my three needles up through my little cup in my bead tip. Okay, I promise this works. Okay, so that's all three of my needles threaded through my bead tip and then I'm going to pull that all the way down until it stops on my knot. And then just to kind of lock this in place, I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. And I can use my knotting tweezers to position it. So I just tied my knot. I'm going to go through it with my tweezers, pull it tight, and then push that down towards. Ooh. My bead tip. There we go. So what I should have now is a nice knot that's right beneath my bead tip. Now I'm going to take a couple minutes and I'm going to string my beads. So I have three strands, I have three needles. Onto each strand of silk, I'm going to string one entire strand of crystal. So that's going to take me a couple of minutes. So while I'm doing that, I want to remind you all that we have a live merchandise sale coming up. After this broadcast, it's going to be probably starting between 7.30 and 7.45. We have new metal spacer beads. Um, they are base metal spacers, but there's some really, really stinging cool ones. And they are all um, bargain priced. So if you, <laughs> if you're looking for some cool metal beads to add to your work, um, we have some really great bargains for you on the stream this evening. We also still have new glass, so I may throw some of that in as well, but um, we're going to be focusing on metal beads tonight. We've got um, silver tone, gold tone, and copper tone, and again, some really cool ones for you this evening. So metal beads are going to be our focus on our sales stream tonight. 
Um, tomorrow is a two tutorial Thursday, of course, so we have um, our fun um, Thursday lunchtime tutorial, and then we have Torch Thursday in the evening, um, which is going to be, I have no idea. <laughs> did not grab any of the samples for tomorrow but um tune in it's gonna be fun whatever it is it's gonna be a good time so um we have a noon stream and a 6 p.m. stream tomorrow Friday is going to be zoom that's our zoom crafty cocktail time um, that means that I finally um, once again get to see all your beautiful faces and um, we will be on Zoom on Friday night. That's free crafting time. You can do whatever you want. And of course, Heather and I will be available to help you if you need help with anything, be it our project, another person's project, or your own project. Um, we are here for you on Friday night. And then Saturday will be another fun tutorial. That's going to be our graduated um, stone tassel and or graduated bead tassel and also a live merchandise sale. So, just continuing to string. It's like I said, it's going to take me a couple minutes. So, yes! Yay! We can all see Lori's new craft area because Lori finally um, got to move her craft area back into her basement, which I'm, again, totally jealous of the fact that Lori has a basement and I do not because I live in Texas where they don't have basements um, and Lori has a door on her crafting area so she does not have to deal with cat butts um, positioning themselves on top of the crafting so yes I will be super excited to um, have a tour of the new craft area on Friday night And yeah, so it should be fun. So if you haven't Zoomed with us before, um, email us beatingdreamsdallas at gmail.com and we're happy to give you those Zoom credentials. If you have Zoomed with us before, it's the same meaning it always is. And... Cats howl. I know, oh my gosh, Ziggy is still on house arrest because of his unfortunate incident with my neighbor and he's got another um, few days to go before hopefully his gabapentin will kick in and he will be a kinder gentler Ziggy and he just will sit and yowl at the cat door and yeah it's just he sounds so very very sad like it's just so terrible uh, being him Yes, Travel Ziggy is definitely so hilariously dramatic. I will probably treat the sale stream to a rendition of Ziggy um, in the car. It's it's definitely there's some there's some major song of his people action going on there, and and much unnecessary drama. I promise, I was not actually murdering my cat whilst I was driving him to the vet, but he would probably say something different. He did say something different at the top of his little kitty lungs. Alright, so I'm almost done stringing my first strand. I got two more strands to go. Yes, I had intended to pre-string these, but as usual, stuff happened at the end of the day, and I did not get around. on stream days the things they just like they happen at 545 all right so while I'm stringing what has everyone done over the, the days that we haven't seen you that's been exciting I'm assuming that Lori finished moving her stuff into her crafting area in the basement what else has everyone been up to Come on, there's eight of you out there. Spill. Who did something fun this weekend? Mm 
I'm just gonna sit here and be quiet until somebody says something. I'm going to be quiet for the rest of the broadcast. Come on, somebody fess up. What did you do this weekend? That was fun. Or did you all just do like clandestine illegal things that you can't fess up to on the internet because the man is watching? <laughs> Ace of slept in that totally counts. I find that extremely exciting actually. Nothing exciting or productive. I was sort of productive, but not as productive as I would have liked to be. I know, it is, Corvus is not wrong, it is so freaking hot, like, it's, it's insane. Oof, wow. I mean, I'm not a fan of hail, but I could definitely go for a thunderstorm. Like, sort of rain for five seconds in parts of Dallas last week, and I was super jealous. Because yeah. none of, none of, none of the parts of Dallas were where I was. So I definitely um, wish that it had rained on me. Though I, I could do without the five inch hail because uh, my garage is currently so full of crap that I can't put my car in it. So if it hails, um, my, my car is just gonna be out there getting beaten up. So um, I, I would be happy if the hail um, holds off until I can actually clean out my garage. Okay, one strand is done. Yay, two more to go. Sorry, I realize this is not the most interesting thing ever. Like I said, I had planned to pre stream this, but then things happen. Sweet customers brought us food, which was amazing. Staff members had temper tantrums, which was less amazing. And now here we are. Yeah, I'm sure, Lori. Like, that's some intense hail. Oh, our customer, who's amazing, brought me... Vietnamese coffee. Mm. So good. Also completely packed with caffeine, so um, should get me through the sale tonight without um, falling asleep, so that's good. Okay, so I'm on uh, strand two of my beads. I'm going to try and get through this one ASAP so I can get through the third one and I can actually show you the technique here. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, weather be cray lately. And it's only probably going to get worse. Which is truly frightening. But I would have appreciated the rain. Again, not so much the giant hail, but my garden would have liked the rain. 
but as of as of now my I'm like I'm just right now my garden as far as I'm concerned it's it's like an episode of Survivor like if you make it to the end of the summer then you get to stay otherwise you know if you die you die um, I, I kept everything alive for my birthday party which is what I wanted even though it was too hot to sit outside anyway during my birthday party so I might have not might as well not even have bothered but I did it and so now it's like yeah, it's, it's, it, it is what it is, and whatever survives till the end of the summer, those are the winners of the survival game. Um, one of these weekends you'll get together and visit and not construct anything. I feel like that's not going to happen for a minute, though, since he's getting all settled in his new place and all. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I don't think that's what... I do not think that means what you think it means. Oh, dang. Well, then no, I can't do that. Yeah. eat some contraband. What contraband? Macaroni and cheese. It's not contraband. It's dramatic. Well, it's dramatic, but that's not the same as contraband. It's not like anyone's going to arrest you for the macaroni and cheese. So you're a macaroni and cheese smuggler smuggling macaroni and cheese across state lines to a state where cheese is forbidden. Okay. Now these laws are really getting out of power. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have babies and I can't have cheese. I, I, okay, fair. Like, mm hmm. <laughs> that definitely sounds like a dystopian nightmare. <laughs> in so many ways. Drama. Why people gotta be so dramatic? I don't know. About somebody else's money. About somebody else's money. Well, because of course she is better than all of us, and so she should have, you know. I, oh. 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 Did, so did you have uh, gluten-free mac and cheese, Corvus, or did you like just suffer the consequences of regular mac and cheese? Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, there there are several gluten free ones made from rice, actually. Um, like, and and I mean, if you're looking for for recommendations, like there are several. It also depends on how much money you want to spend. But Annie's does make their shells and white cheddar gluten free. Of course, it costs twice as much as the shells and white cheddar with gluten. Um, they also make one that's got like the Velveeta style squeezy pack that's very good or they make just your your generic you know rice pasta and powdered cheese powdered orange cheese which is again twice as much as the regular rice pot or regular pasta and um, orange powder cheese but definitely tastes pretty much the same or you can just you know boil up some gluten-free pasta and then throw a bunch of butter and parmesan cheese and heavy cream in there and pepper and uh make yourself some alfredo also cheese rice is delicious cheese rice is also delicious it's true i know right seriously corvus is not wrong your bread is tiny and twice as ex you pay twice as much for 50 percent less bread 
if you're gluten free or if you want real sized breads, you can pay $8 in Dallas. I don't know how much it is in California, but Canyon Bakehouse has what they call a heritage gluten free loaf that has bread slices that are the size of normal bread. The loaf is not the size of a normal bread loaf. The loaf is like a third of a loaf, but the, the slices are actually the, the regular size, which is great when you're making a sandwich because um, when you make a sandwich on regular gluten-free bread, you, you have this just like all of the cold cuts just like overhang the bread because there's just not enough bread real estate for the cold cuts. You have a meat border. Yeah. So, so yeah, so if you, if you don't want a meat border on your sandwich, you can, you can buy the heritage bread. Again, $7.99 for a loaf of bread, and no, I'm not making this up. Once again, I bet it costs more in Cali than it does here in Dallas. Um, and yeah, for that you get the, you know, the equivalent of a third of a, of a regular sized loaf of bread. So yeah, gluten-free is not cheap. starting to think about I should have done a bracelet instead of a necklace for tonight's tutorial but $11 in Cali yeah not surprising <laughs> so yes I am very jealous of all of the non-gluten-free folks who can and I even brought a bread machine because I was like I'm gonna make my own gluten-free bread yeah I never could manage to actually get a gluten-free bread recipe that tasted decent so I sold my bread machine. <clears throat> well, I would have just asked Annie for some. I know, everything in Cali is crazy. When my aunt lived in uh, LA and when she lived in New York, she would actually go back to Wisconsin when she was home visiting and she would, she would buy staples, like non-perishable things, and, and ship them from Wisconsin to herself in um, California and New York she lived in both of those places because it was actually still incredibly cheaper um, to buy them in Wisconsin and ship them than to buy them in either LA or New York okay I'm coming up on the end of strand number two so you're only gonna have to listen to me talking about gluten-free food for one more strand of beads and then we're actually gonna go ahead and make this necklace I would also like that recipe, Lori, if you wouldn't mind posting it in Discord. Though I, I did find, um, there's a frozen pizza dough called Manini's that they have on Amazon Fresh that's actually really tasty. Um, you've got to par-bake it before you put toppings on it, otherwise it winds up soggy AF. But if you, if you, you know, press it out and you, you know, do some olive oil and salt on it and then par-bake it and then put your toppings on it, it's actually really good. Now, I am saying this is somebody who's been gluten-free for close to 10 years now, so I may have forgotten how actual pizzas should taste. But for, for my gluten-free self, that particular pizza dough is a pretty good substitute. Also, really anything with shredded potatoes sounds like a win. Well, that is true. I mean, I have never met a potato I didn't like, ever. I am an equal opportunity potato consumer. Goodness, yes. Alright, so that's the end of strand number two. Now we're going on to strand number three. Um... Sometimes your pain is worth it for real. There's only one pizza, and and I don't really get the opportunity to have it anymore because it's, because it it's in my hometown, which I don't go visit that much anymore since my mom lives here now. Um, but I will I will endure the migraine for Rocky Rococo pizza um, from Milwaukee. But other than that pain is just not worth it because there's just so much pain. Also, then there's the consequences of taking too many painkillers like a $7,000 hospital stay. And I 
definitely cannot afford another one of those because I haven't paid off the last one. Well, to be fair, that was a conscious decision. Well, yes, it's true. I did decide to get a new car instead of pay off my hospital bills. I still stand by that decision. I agree with you. Mellow Mushroom does have an awesome gluten-free crust. Heather is not wrong. Um, let's see. Are there So I know there are Mellow Mushrooms in North Carolina and here in Texas. Where else are there Mellow Mushrooms, Heather? Uh, I know Tennessee. Let's see. Does Corvus have access to any Mellow Mushroom pizzerias? Because they are really legitimately good. Um, I will also say that the got Arlington McKinney in Fort Worth. I don't think Corvus really has and convenient Denton. access to any of those. Um, I will say though that the the fast pizza delivery chains like Domino's and Papa John's also have decent gluten free crusts now. That did not used to be the case. Yes. Papa John's gluten free crust used to be absolutely horrifying. It's not anymore. It's totally edible. Of course, you're still paying twice as much for a tiny pizza, but sometimes. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but there are a lot of, like, find a local pizzeria. Um, there was one here that unfortunately was destroyed by a tornado, and I'm not even kidding about that. It had a really good gluten-free crust. I'm looking to see. Let's see. So we talked about gluten-free bread. We're talking about gluten-free pizza. Um, pasta. Corvus, what's your favorite gluten-free pasta? I'm a huge fan of the Barilla gluten-free pasta. Once again, to me, it tastes pretty much the same, but I've been gluten-free for long enough that again, I may have forgotten how pasta is supposed to taste. Um, but I like the Barilla pasta. And no, obviously I have not given up carbs since I'm gluten-free, as you can could see by the rotundness of my midsection, if you could see my midsection. Um, no, no one said California, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Wait, th what, huh? Is, is there a California, Pennsylvania? I don't know. Okay, so I am, I'm stringing my third strand. Apparently they are not in California yet. So no mellow mushrooms in California. That just means that Corvus is going to have to come visit us here. Yep. Oh my gosh, don't look, right? Well, and my problem is when I look up recipes when I'm hungry is I just, like, my ambitions so much exceed my capabilities, not like my skill capabilities but like my energy capabilities I'm like yes I'm gonna make this super complicated thing and this other super complicated thing and I get in the kitchen I'm like I am so hungry that I really just want to put something in the microwave and stuff it in my face um so so yeah do not look up recipes when you're when you're hungry when you're me because you will get yourself in for um <clears throat> a lot of trouble you don't necessarily want to go through. But I did make a really yummy salmon in a white wine lemon caper sauce the other night. I would just tasty. eat white wine, wine lemon caper sauce with a spoon. Fair. Good to know. This one turned out good and not weird like that other one that I put on the pasta that one time. That was just bad. <clears throat> okay, so, so the longest part of this project is the stringing, which I am finally coming down to the end of. The rest of the project is going to go fairly quickly. Um, 
And yes, Corvus, clearly you must come visit for the pizza. And also... And the other things. And the other things. The Heather and the me and the Beating Dream Stream. To have an in-person Corvus. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not worthy, but still. We aspire to the, to the in-person Corvusness. So close, I have like three inches left. Lori's just sitting there like chomping on her mouse, like please get to the actual technique of the project <laughs> before I eat my arm. Yes, absolutely, Corvus, fingers crossed. <coughs> Don't die. Okay, so I've got all three strands strung. Yay! That sounds really good, Lori. Wait, what? Oh, did she post something in Discord? Yes. Got it. Like, whatever it is, I didn't see it. I probably don't need to see it right this second, because I would just be drooling all over my project. Okay, so now I have three strands of beads strung. And yes, I realized that was rather a lengthy process again. I apologize. But I didn't have that one pre-done. Thank you all for hanging out and listening to me rattle on about gluten-free food. Okay, so I've got three strands of my crystals all strung on my three strands of silk. So I want to make sure that this is these crystals are not going to just up and fall off while I am knotting them. So I'm just going to take a bead stopper and I'm going to put it about six or eight inches away from my beads and I'm just gonna put all three of my silks in it. Um, I'm probably gonna wind up having to move that at some point but for now this should be enough for me to get started. So I'm right-handed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put my bead tip on the right hand side and all the rest of my stuff on my left hand side. I'm going to find myself knotting tweezers and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down on each strand five crystals. So that's five there, five on the middle, and five here. Okay, so that's five crystals on each strand, like so. Then I'm gonna take all three of my strands, I'm gonna hold them together, I'm gonna put them in my dominant hand, so for me that's my right hand, and I'm gonna treat them like once. I'm gonna wrap them all three around my fingers and pull them through. Then I'm gonna take my tweezers, I'm gonna follow through that knot, and I'm gonna grab all three of my strands of beads. And I'm gonna press really um, firmly down on my crystals. I'm gonna pull my cord, and then I'm going to go ahead and take it off my tweezers, and I'm gonna push. So what that's going to give me is that's going to give me my three strands with my knot holding them together. Now I'm going to repeat five crystals on each strand. So five, five, five. Now it's worth noting 
that it is very important for this technique that all of your beads are the same size. Um, on my <coughs> my sample, they actually weren't, so I had to compensate. I had to do five on two and four on one. So just do yourself a favor. Make sure that you've got three strands of beads that are exactly the same size. So I got five crystals down on each strand, and then I'm going to go around and through. Follow with my tweezers, tighten, push. So I'm pushing with my thumbnail, take my tweezers out, and then pushing towards my beads to tighten. Like so. And then, once again, five beads on each strand. So what I'm doing is I just have all my beads up here, and I'm just using my tweezers to grab five and slide them down. That, for me, is the easiest way to kind of keep track of everything because once I've got all my five sort of slid down then what I can do is I can gather up my threads and I can pull everything so that it's even and all of the rest of my loose crystals are still down here on the other end so I've got my three groups of five and then again around through push down with your tweezers, make sure they're all even, or you're not, and push your knot down. So now we just keep doing this until we've got all of our crystals knotted. So now it becomes a bit of a speed run. Let's see how fast I can get this done. As we theoretically have a sale at 7.30, which obviously is not happening at 7.30 since it's already 7.03, but we're going to try and get our sale going by 7.45, which means that I need to finish this project by 7.15. Do we think I can do it? Does anyone have a bet? Do you think I can finish this project by 7.15 or not? Anybody who, uh, you don't, and you don't have to fluff my ego here, like if you really don't think. I can um, finish this project by 7.15. You are totally um, valid in having that opinion. But anybody who guesses correctly um, is going to get a discount on tonight's sales stream. I'm still not allowed to guess, right? You're still not allowed to guess. Also, you already get a discount because you work here. Um, so if you if, I like winning. <laughs> so vote if you think I can finish the project by 7.15 or not. Um, anybody who votes correctly, be that yes or no, um, will get five, one, two, We'll get a 25% um, discount on one item on tonight's sales stream. Alright, so we have some overwhelming votes of confidence that I can, in fact, finish this by 7.15. I think they may have been um, inspired by my 11-minute nodding on uh, Friday. What we are voting for, Corvus, is do we think I can finish this project by 7.15? Once again, anybody who votes correctly, whether that be yes or no, like there's no prejudice here. Like, you can vote no, and if you're right, you get a 25% discount off of something from tonight's sales stream. Um, and yeah, Sharon is right. It's so much faster than individual nodding because you are nodding in groups of five. The main, you know, the main issue here is, like, control of your multiple strings and not getting them in a giant knot down here because that is what's really going to slow you down, is if you've got to untangle, you know, giant knots of cord with beads, you know, on your free ends. So that's why this is one of those things that it's a really good idea to have a good flat knotting surface for and to keep the cats away from it. Um, I will say one of the things about Ziggy being on house arrest because he was misbehaving at my neighbor's so he's not allowed to go out for a few more days is he is all up in my Cheerios 
when I'm trying to work. And by all up in my Cheerios, I mean his butt is all up on my beads that I'm trying to work with. Especially the Cheerio shaped one. Yeah, and and that's all well and good because, you know, nobody needs, you know, I don't have to disclose that there was cat butt on the beads when I sell them. But then he starts like flicking his tail and then beads are just like pew, 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 pew. How are they? Pew, 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 pew. I feel like that is completely accurate. <laughs> Wait, we're directing the conversation to a more chunky topic? Are we directing- Chunkier than Ziggy? Are we directing it away from cat butts or towards bigger cat butts? Kenneth, help. <laughs> Yay, I get to vote in a poll! Yay! Alright, so so far, everyone has voted that I will get this done by 7.15. Although now I don't know how to make the poll go away. Uh -huh. So I can watch you. I know, right? Getting good God. Yes. Glue and cats. Not a fan. Um black light reactive paints in cats also. Oh at least you can find them in the dark. <laughs> Yeah. If you have a black light. If you have a black light. Um, cause yeah, definitely Ziggy has gotten some black light paint on his furs. I'm still waiting to know what this chunky topic is. Come on, Kenneth, be forthcoming. Right? Oh, got it. Continuing on, okay, that section I could have done better, but we're just gonna go with it. Hi, Jan! How are you? Are you still on summer, or have you started back at the salt mines? Yay. Okay, so I need a little bit more uh, space, so I'm going to take my bead stopper, I'm going to untangle it from this Gordian knot that it has gotten itself in, I'm going to move it up a little bit. Teacher's back next week. Enjoy your last week of freedom. Get some R&R. &R. Store some up. Awesome. We get to see a jam tomorrow. Hooray. We see all the good people tomorrow. I mean, not all the good people, because I oh, realize that I won't be here, though. some of y'all won't be here, but we see lots of good people tomorrow. I'll say that. Including, apparently, Jan. Arkansas as well. Well, I think it's hot. I think it's hot everywhere except for Canada at the moment. And I have questions about parts of Canada. <laughs> Alright, so I'm coming down to the end of my knotting.
Kenneth, I'm sorry we are you in an OFTU that one day. Jan wants to know if you put aside the spinel. I did. Okay, she did. Quite enthusiastically. Apparently so. Six degrees Fahrenheit where Lori is. No, Heather, you cannot go. I need you. But nope. What if you also come? Um nobody needs us here. I mean we'd have what to take, are we? we'd have to take Ziggy. And Mamie. And maybe Dallas. So we'd have a full car that sings. Right? Yes. It's still worth it. What is Ottawa's heat like? I'm just curious. <laughs> All right. Jan wants to take a road trip. No worries. Yeah. Jan and Heather both. Oh, is there nap time before stream? Uh, if you want to nap now, you can sleep for like 10 minutes. Mm. I'll save it for later. <laughs> so Lori, Jan may be knocking at your door at some point the day after tomorrow. <laughs> Gotta get there on time, man. All right, so, okay, so that's it. I've officially come to the end of one of my strands of beads. I don't have five beads left on that one strand, so that means that, um, yeah, if I can get this undone, I can take my extra beads off. All right, so this is my knotted piece, all knotted. So it's about 16 inches long or so. And so now I'm going to grab my second bead tip and I'm going to put all three of my needles through it the opposite direction from my first one. So I'm holding it now with the hook facing away from my project. And everything goes up through. So one, two, and the third one. Pull that all the way down. So all the way down till it's sitting against the end of your knotting. And then you're just going to separate these cords. Um, so I've got two in one hand, one in the other. And you're just going to tie a knot where you're going to flip the two through three times. And pull tight. Make sure that goes right down inside that bead tip. And then you're going to do a single. And of course, since you're trying to finish, in a certain amount of time, your bead stopper is going to get stuck on everything. All right, so now I have two knots, one inside of each bead tip, and I'm going to real quick grab some hypo cement. Here. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Or Heather's going to hand me some because she's the bestest. I don't and know about all that, but I. And I'm going to go ahead and glue each knot inside my bead tip and I just want to make sure that each knot gets saturated with hypo cement. So I just want to make sure each knot is good and covered with the glue 
And then we can go ahead and we can trim those knots off as close to the knot as possible. So you want to get rid of all of your extra little bits. And then the last thing that we're going to do is put on our clasp. So that's going to be my lobster claw and my soldered ring. On one end, my lobster claw is going to hook around my bead tip. And this is going to require me to open my bead tip just a little bit. Drop my clasp on there. And then bring it down so what you want is you want that end to go down inside that bead tip and then we're going to do the same on the other side just open drop that on there and close it up now you want to make sure that you give this a good 10 to 15 minutes to dry before you stress it overly much Meaning, you know, don't wear it, don't, you know, fling it around your head like a lasso until you're sure that it's dried, but... Don't shake right, it like a Polaroid picture. Don't shake it like a Polaroid picture until you're sure that the glue is dry, but there we go. So, it's not 7.15, but it is 7.17. I'm going to call that close enough, so everybody who guessed yes on that, I'll scroll back. You all get 25% uh, off one item on tonight's live merchandise sale which starts in 30 minutes so first of all thank you all so much for hanging out with us for the vintage style knotting tutorial um, on this evening's wednesday night beating dream stream i hope that was fun i hope you all learned something cool um it is a really really fun and really pretty um method of knotting and also it is um, as Sharon observed, as long as you can keep everything out of a knot, it's significantly faster than knotting bead by bead. We will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beading dream in 30 minutes with a live merchandise sale featuring brand new metal spacer beads. Um... <laughs> okay, so everybody who voted yes, um, just post real quick in the chat before you split to go get dinner so that I can make sure everybody gets um, their 25% off. We're going to go um, get everything ready for the sale and that I don't know that I can get this untangled um, <laughs> from this heat stopper. It's all, it's all a mess. Anyway, we'll see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beading dream in 30 minutes with a live merchandise sale featuring, featuring metal spacer beads and discounts for everybody who had faith that I could finish that project by 715. Um, if you're not going to join us for the sale, thanks so much for joining us for the tutorial. And don't forget, you can find us back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beading dream tomorrow at noon with our um, lunchtime tutorial for Thursday and then at 6 p.m. with our torch Thursday tutorial. So everyone who's going to be here for the sale, don't wait for your Twitch notification. Just check back on this channel twitch.tv forward slash beating dream in 30 minutes at 7 50 p.m for that live sale all right i'm allison and we'll see you soon bye